come out of here. There must be a secret spring around here someplace. I think I'll look in back of these books. This was a trick to get us out of the house. Come on. Who are you anyway? I'm the gorilla's keeper. Are you in a day with your crock on the head? No, but it's a good idea. Oh, yeah? Thank you. Okay, this next segment features one of my favorite groups out of Canton, Ohio, which is relatively close here. And uh, <laughs> and uh, this is a band that they uh, uh, introduced themselves to me and they said, hey, we want to play on your show. And, uh, and this was back during dinosaur video days. So this is uh, a, a good example of what we were able to do back then with, uh, you know, like dinosaur type of uh, video cameras. The, remember the big the big VHS camera, you know, that you would carry on your shoulder like this, you know, and it was like, hey, hey, how did you do that? Oh, man. So anyway, this uh, features 
one of my great friends, Mr. Mark Lothrop on guitar, and uh, James Walker on bass, and then uh, Gary on the violin. So without any further ado, let's present Delirious Trimmers! a minute, don't you think you're a little premature? Premature? Well, I can't remember that far back. Just who are you? I'm Detective Coletti, an investigator for the Securities and Exchange Commission. And I'm on the trail of the gorilla just as you are. A detective? How do we know that? Yes, we... <coughs> well, uh, uh, what were you doing in there? Investigating. I've been on this case for some weeks now. And I've discovered a little about the construction of this house 
that my good friend here don't seem to have found out yet. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? This house is a maze of secret panels. Now, undoubtedly, the voice of the gorilla came through that radio from someplace right in this house. That means that if we find the wire leading away from the radio... We'd at least find the gorilla's hideout. Say, what's going on here? Well, well, here it is. Here's the wire going right in here. It's fine. Just as I thought. Here's the wire. Now, by tracing this, I think we may find the answer to this entire riddle. The wire goes in here. Back of this wall is the man we want. Yeah, we'll make a note of that, Garrett. Are you all armed? Yes, I'm armed. Shh, shh, quiet, you. Here it is. There is your microphone, and as I expected, there is your gorilla. Mr. Stevens, the gorilla? Well, sure, I could have told you that all the time. I guess the party is over, my gorilla friend. Yeah, but who tied him up like that? I don't know. He figured the game was up and that this would throw off suspicion. This is a homemade job. A child could have done it. Ah, it's preposterous. Don't believe him. I never saw this man before in my life. It's insane. Oh, now what's that? Oh, why is it with all the men in the house they have to leave us here with you? Quiet. Alias the gorilla. The gorilla? Him? Oh, I'll never trust another man if I live to be a thousand. You can make that two thousand. Uncle Walter the gorilla. I don't believe it. I think I can make it very clear. Oh, uh, sure we can. Now, first of all, what's that? Oh, I didn't hear a thing. Neither did I, but what was it? We'll soon find out. Hey, what is this? Who hit me? What's going on around here? It's that man again. Oh, there you are. Kidnapped. Kidnapped by the gorilla. Not kidnapped by the gorilla, Mr. Conway. A.P. Conway. Uh, the A.P. stands for ape. Mr. Conway, this gentleman is the gorilla. The gorilla? But if Uncle Walt is the gorilla, I don't understand why he should send himself those notes of warning. For two reasons. To keep you here and to throw off suspicion from himself. Miss Denby, under the terms of your father's will, if anything were to happen to you, who would inherit your estate? Uncle Walter. My hunch was right. Your uncle brought you here tonight to kill you for your money. Well, at least he had a reason. So that's why he wouldn't let us call the police. That's exactly why. But what about these men, these private detectives? <laughs> they almost speak for themselves. Do you think if Stephen's life had actually been threatened, he would have called in three morons such as these for protection? <laughs> for <laughs> <Morons>. <laughs> Hey, wait a minute. I resent that. But I tell you, I saw the gorilla right there in that closet. I saw his hand and his arm, and it was no optical confusion. What you saw was this sleeve. Another ingenious little invention of Mr. Stevens. Mm, it's a very cute little idea. <laughs> well, that about clears the whole matter up. And since it stopped raining, I think I'd better go. <laughs> You're OK, oh, buddy. Okay. Yeah, he's all right. Congratulations. Yeah. Let me congratulate you. You're wonderful. Please. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, you don't, buddy. OK, folks. Say howdy to the gorilla. Howdy. All right, give out, or this moron is going to blow your brains out. Well, you see, it was all that. Oh. Now, all of you stick your hands up. I'm the gorilla, all right. But the cops haven't been able to get me, so don't you halfwits get any crazy notions. And as for Mr. Stevens, he's just as crooked as I told you he was. The trouble with him is he talks too much and too loud. I got tipped off on what was going to happen here tonight. How he was going to pretend to be me. I was going to get the $250,000 and at the same time let him get the blame for all the gorilla murders. Well, you better be careful. I'm a little nervous tonight. Drop that gun. And I advise you not to move. Station, quickly. What is this? I thought the phone was out of order. Maybe he paid his bill. Hello? This is Walter Stevens speaking. Send a squad car to my house. We've got the gorilla. Things are so mixed up around here that even the gorilla doesn't know who the gorilla is. He's the gorilla, he's the gorilla. Do I know what I'm doing? Look, what's going on here? <laughs> Don't look so sad, darling. Your uncle isn't a crook, and our estate's all safe and sound now. <laughs> you know, you never can tell. This is liable to wind up to be a mystery. You see, the gorilla murders were threatening to bank up our insurance company. Most of the victims were clients of ours. So Conway, our special investigator, cooked up his little scheme to trap the killer. I'm sorry I had to frighten you, dear. 
And you too, Kitty. Oh, I wasn't frightened. I was numb. You fellas are certainly great detectives. Oh, oh yes. Yeah. Yeah. We could have told you that. Did you know that Cluddy was the grill all along? Oh, sure no we did. did. No, we didn't. Huh? When did you find out he was the grill? When I shook hands with him. I don't get you. Well, you see, I was a window trimmer in a department store. And I ought to know a phony feel when I feel one. <laughs> <laughs> we'll never be able to thank you, Mr. Harrigan. Oh, well, that's all right. I understand you two are getting married soon. Well, if you call tomorrow soon. Well, remember, if you have any trouble with it, <laughs> our specialty is following wives. <laughs> You know where to send a check, and uh, be sure it's certified. <laughs> From a contented bank. <laughs> Bye. 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 Ladies and gentlemen, it's been great having you here with us tonight. I see you. I see you out there. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, next week, next week, we're going to have it all. We're going to do it all again. We're going to do it over and over again. <laughs> so without any further ado, it's time for me to say good night. My name is Professor Psyops. We'll see you in the funny papers. <laughs> <laughs>